Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the third episode of Paleo Spotlight with your host, Bean. In this episode, I have the pride, the privilege, nay, the pleasure of introducing you to one so sublime, so fantastical that some doubters believe him to be mere legend, his existence shaking their worldview to the core, an ancient pioneer who can trace his lineage back to the early paleo gene. 60 million long years ago. Behold, the one, the only, the forerunner, the original, the transcendent, Pachycetus! <laughs> Pachycetus is, as far as we currently know, one of the earliest basal cetaceans. Basal meaning that all cetaceans, or whales, as normal people refer to them as, evolved from Pachycetus and its relatives. Now, I just love whales. From dolphins, to blue whales, to narwhals, to belugas, to the even somewhat psychotic orcas. Cetaceans are some of the most fascinating and beautiful animals that we have the privilege of sharing our planet with. They're emotional and intelligent, and many people, including myself, believe they may even possess sentience. And the only reason they can't show us just how intelligent they are is because their unique morphology prevents them from doing so. Perhaps sometime in the future, some very smart people out there will be able to decode their songs and talk to them, confirming their sentience once and for all. Now, back to Pachycetus, where the cetacean lineage all began. Pachycetus means Pakistan whale in Greek, and it got its name from the fine spot of its fossils. It was found in, you guessed it, Pakistan, in the Kaldana Formation, which is in the northern region of the country. There are currently four described species of Pachycetus, the bulk of this video being focused on Pachycetus ataki, which is the most well-known species of the Pachycetid family. Pachycetus lived roughly 60 to 50 million years ago in the early Eocene epoch, and it resided in a warm, swampy river delta habitat. The ancient river deltas in what is now Pakistan and India emptied into the shallow and tropical Tethys Sea. Most or all of the early cetaceans evolved near or in the Tethys Sea, Pachycetus in particular living along the sea's northern border. This ancient ocean existed for about 150 million years and ended up being closed off into separate inland seas roughly 20 million years ago with landmass changes, such as the formation of the Alps. Remnants of the Tethys Sea actually still exist today, such as the Caspian Sea between Europe and Asia, the Black Sea in Eastern Europe, and the saltwater lake Ermia in Iran. There is much debate about whether or not Pachycetus was semi-aquatic or fully terrestrial. Many artists like to depict Pachycetus as being semi-aquatic, like otters for example, but this may have not been the case. Living cetaceans have evolved ear bones that are perfectly adapted to hearing underwater. However, Pachycetus still had an inner ear structure that was suited for living solely on dry land. They did have inner ear structures that are only found in cetaceans, helping to link them to the whale family and prove the cetaceans are artiodactyls. Its fossils have also typically been found among other land flora and fauna, further indicating that Pachycetus lived on land. Their vertebrae, joints, hind limb features, pelvis, etc. all seem to point towards them being land animals, visibly resembling wolves or dogs. There is chemical evidence from their teeth that points towards their diets consisting primarily of fish, and they also preferred coastal habitats with shallow water. However, those things don't necessarily mean they were semi-aquatic, considering many extant animals primarily eat fish and are completely terrestrial. One quote that many articles written about Pachycetus like to cite on the subject is by the Dutch paleontologist Hans de Wissen, who in 2001 wrote that, Pachycetids were terrestrial mammals, no more amphibious than the tapir. However, these animals did indeed evolve into fully aquatic creatures and were a geological stone's throw away from fully aquatic cetaceans such as Ambulocetus. I personally do believe that Pachycetus was semi-aquatic, and just as there are many bits of evidence that seem to point towards them being terrestrial, there are many that point towards a semi-aquatic lifestyle that are more than just assumptions based on their diet or habitat. One piece of evidence for a semi-aquatic lifestyle that really stands out to me is their eye placement. 
I may have not really drawn it quite right in my rendition of Pachycetus, but their eyes were actually further towards the top of their skull rather than on the sides like in modern cetaceans. This means their eye placement was more in line with animals such as crocodilians and hippos, which points towards them being able to stay fully submerged in the water while not losing sight of their surface surroundings. Some scientists argue that while their bodies may seem like they would have been better suited for land, microstructural evidence points towards a more aquatic lifestyle. Increased bone density, used as skeletal ballast, could have been used to control their position in the water, and their tails look to be very well adapted to both stabilization and propulsion through the water. Though we can't know for sure whether they were semi-aquatic or not, at least not without more fossils or perhaps a time machine, the evidence we do currently possess seems to be rather split down the middle of the issue. Since Pachycetus represents a very special transitional time for whales, it may be that we never find out what their lifestyle was like. They lived along the coasts of an ancient sea, dotted with islands and dominated by the tides, perhaps initially evolving their semi-aquatic characteristics to help them traverse the ever-changing landscape in search of their next meal. Hopefully, sometime in the future, paleontologists will find more pachycetid fossils and with them more information about how these mystifying creatures looked and lived. Well, that's all I have on the pachycetus for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll catch you on the flip side.